I apologize for the delay. This video was actually supposed to go up on Friday, but as I told y'all before, y'all know I'm in school and I got stuff I'm doing as far as papers and other different assignments that I have to do too. So some of that stuff had to kind of take precedence over me getting this done, but I'm finally able to get it out to you guys. So I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of random conversation in the beginning. Let's go ahead and get this in. Um, let's go ahead and start the show. So, woodwind instruments. These are the next um, series of, on the next video, the next PowerPoint that I chose to do for you guys naturally was woodwind instruments. I figured I'd get all the wind instruments out of the way first. And you got the brass instruments that we did last week. And we're going to do woodwinds now. Then next will be strings and drums and percussion will be last. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, so some family traits of woodwind instruments. So traditionally woodwind instruments are instruments that are either made of wood or were traditionally made of wood, like a flute, or you or instruments that use a reed to reduce the sound, like a clarinet, oboe, English horn, bassoon, saxophone, pretty much any other woodwind besides flutes. Those are the only ones that don't use reeds. Um, so now most of the of the reeded instruments that are woodwinds only require one reed, one reed. So that would be saxophone, clarinet, and then um, most of the pop, more popular ones only require one because you don't really hear the oboe and the bassoon and the English horn in popular music. You primarily only hear all the classical music. So clarinet, saxophone take one reed. But then I was reading and I saw some of those like like ethnic and culturally specific woodwind instruments. Some of them take up to four reeds, and that was kind of neat because I never heard that before. Um, so the three main groups in music that you guys will be hearing are. Nine reed instruments, that should be like flutes, piccolos, pipes, those type of things. Um, single reed instruments, which would be clarinet, saxophone, and then double reed instruments, which are oboe, English horn, and bassoon. Now, like I said before a couple times, several members of the Woodwind family are culturally specific. So all that means is that they are unique to certain uh, certain areas of the world, certain cultures, and they use them to make their own music for that specific culture. Now, how do they work? So, woodwind instruments have several buttons or keys on them. Most flutes have holes instead of keys. And actually, a lot of the woodwinds, like clarinets, clarinets have holes and keys, and so do flutes. And to explain this a little bit further, the flutes that you see and that you hear in popular music have keys. But traditionally, flutes didn't have keys that have holes. Clarinets have both, and some of the other woodwinds have both. And saxophones just have keys. I mean, they have openings, but they primarily, you pressing keys, you're not covering holes. The keys cover the holes. Um, so the keys are used to shorten or, or to shorten or lengthen the size of the other instrument because pretty much all wind instruments are just tubing, and they change the pitch. So the more keys you put down, the lower the note usually. The more keys you have open, that's how the notes go higher. So instruments that don't require a reed, so like flutes, um, if it's a flute you place to the side, you're blowing across the hole that's in the top or the neck of the flute. You blow across it, and that's how you get the sound, because that's how the sound uh, it vibrates across the hole. The hole produces the air produces the sound. Now with the flute that you put in your mouth and play, you're just blowing into it and then covering the holes. Now. Single reed instruments are a little bit different. So if you look at a clarinet or a saxophone, the very top of the instrument that you put in your mouth is called the mouthpiece. There's a little metal ring with two little, little turning knobs on it. That's called the ligature. And then there's the reed. Now, how that works is the musician places the reed onto the mouthpiece, puts the ligature on the top, secures the mouthpiece in place, and then by pressing the mouthpiece onto the or the reed and the mouthpiece together with their embouchure, it produces a vibration that makes the sound. Now, the thing about reed instruments is reeds are made out of wood. They have some made out of plastic and wooden, but wooden reeds are typically the ones you'll see. And the way I think the thing that I always tell my instruments because every woodwind player I know has told me this, they have to soak their reeds. So 
Some of them soak them in water. Some of them soak them in their mouth with their saliva. But pretty much, if the reed is wet, then it'll vibrate better because it's just a thin piece of wood. It vibrates better because of it being wet. So that's just another little tip. Now, double reed instruments are a little bit different because they have two reeds that are kind of tied together, as you can see in this picture on the bottom right. Um, they're kind of tied together, and then you stick them into like this socket onto the instrument. So that would be elbow, English horn, and bassoon, and you stick it onto that socket, and then your amateur is actually pressing the two reeds together, and with the two reeds being pressed together, they, vi they vibrate instead of the mouthpiece, and they create the sound. So it's kind of similar, except for instead of the ligature, it's like banded together with like this string here, and then the reeds are pressing together instead of the reed vibrating against the mouthpiece, and that's why double reeds have such a unique sound. Now, what's their purpose? Um, so, in my personal opinion, and somebody could correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I feel like woodwind instruments bridge the strings and the brass because, especially in an orchestra, the strings are the, are the primary instruments. The strings are carrying melody primarily. Um, the strings are the show, and the woodwinds and the brass kind of accent what the strings do in the percussion. They all accent what the strings do. Now, the reason why I say they're like the middle between the woodwinds and the brass, because if you look at an orchestra, the woodwinds actually sit in the middle between the strings. The strings are all kind of in the front. The woodwinds are like in the middle, and the brass is in the back right before the percussion. Now, the reason, the other reason why I say that the, the woodwinds kind of bridge the gap between the strings and the brass is because the woodwinds kind of do double duty. The woodwinds are sometimes play a melody. The woodwinds are sometimes providing inner harmony. The woodwinds are sometimes accenting with the brass. So they kind of weave in and out, and they kind of fill a niche in the orchestra where they're... Um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um... They kind of emphasize like the brass, but just not in, the, in a more like flair or dramatic kind of way. Like the woodwinds are kind of, they add, I don't want to say pretty, but they kind of add a little bit of, they add a little bit of pretty stuff to the, to the, to the, to the sound because you got the more like delicate sound of instruments like the flute and the, and the uh, piccolo kind of bouncing around on the top. And then the clarinets also don't have that harsh of a sound because most of the woodwinds don't have harsh sounds. They have more um smooth sounds so whereas the brass is kind of harsh and kind of in your face the woodwinds are just kind of there they kind of just they kind of just smooth everything out you know they add and they also add effect like for example like bassoons might be used to show somebody walking um flutes could be used to accent somebody like like something like twinkling because of the sound. Just, just those are some examples, and you guys will hear that when I go into the videos and start playing some of this stuff for you. So, like I just said, so they blend well with both families and are used to add emphasis. Um, so the next thing that's really cool about woodwind instruments is that many of them have a lot of different subfamilies, and it's because people sometimes need those woodwinds to fit all of the different like musical ranges and that's remember I talked about this in the brass video the soprano is the highest the alto second highest tenor third highest and then bass is like the bottom so how you explain that is so for example it's the main instrument instruments we're talking about in this video would be flute slash piccolo clarinet uh saxophone english horn oboe bassoon right now Flute, clarinet, and saxophone all have their own like little subfamilies because there's a flute for each one of those vocal ranges or musical ranges. There's a clarinet and a saxophone also for each one of those ranges. And it's cool because that way, like you can have, whereas you can have trumpet choirs and it's not, it's hard to have that because they, although we do have that, it's, it's, it's only like three or four trumpets, whereas with clarinets there's like a whole bunch and you'll see the picture when i go to the page now um other thing that's cool about them several people who play with their instruments play more than one so for example i know my old band teacher mr davis up at the high school of arts he primarily plays clarinet but he also plays flute and saxophone and he also sings but the singing is kind of not important 
with this, but what I'm saying is a lot of people who play woodwinds play more than one instrument, and it's because of the fact that woodwind instruments are all pretty similar. Most of them are in concert pitch, and because they're in concert pitch, you kind of just are transferring. You just are you once you, pretty much once you know the music and you're used to the way the fingerings work, you're just taking what you already know and transferring the finger over and it's it, and it usually translates easier between those instruments than it does with like also might learn a clarinet and then learn a trumpet. So that's why you see a lot of woodwind players playing a bunch of instruments. And also it increases their revenue stream, which is they can make more money. Because in playing like in concert orchestras, you might have to play more than one clarinet. Playing in uh being in like an orchestra or a band for a movie, you might have to play more than one instrument. And also, being in a pit for a, like a play, it's usually not a whole orchestra of woodwind musicians. You might have two or three, and it might have three books. But woodwind one might might be flute, saxophone, oboe. Woodwind two might be clarinet, flute, bassoon, English horn. Woodwind four might be berry sax, tenor sax, bass clarinet. So it's and, and and I don't know how how exactly it works. I don't. I never really looked at a woodwind book, but from seeing from the little bit of time that I've actually like seen it from being in an orchestra pit at a movie. I mean, out of a movie, out of play. That's kind of how it's set up. So it's good for them because they can make more money. Now, woodwind instruments, like all instruments, are found in a variety of music genre, musical genres, and ensembles. Um, for example, you see them in the, in classical music and. That's like in an orchestra, the concert band, symphonic band, soloists, and chamber music. Pretty much the same thing, like I said, for the brass. And all these are going to be similar for the brass, but just in different ways. So orchestra, concert band, and symphonic band are all pretty self-explanatory. A soloist is just like, so somebody having, for example, in Song Swan Lake, when I talk about the double reeds, I'm going to play you guys the oboe solo because that's like one of the most like iconic woodwind solos that you will hear is that oboe solo on Swan Lake. So I'm going to play that for you guys, and solo is just one person playing with it, playing within the group. Um, then you got chamber ensembles. Not a good thing about these is they have like like woodwind like ensembles where it's just woodwinds, no brass, no strings, no drums or percussion. But they also have woodwind ensembles with that are specific to each instrument. So you might have a saxophone choir, a flute choir, and they have all these different flutes, and they have those with the brass too. But I feel like it's 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 almost a little bit more intriguing to me to watch the woodwinds do it because you have a woodwind but like each of the different ranges so the sound is a little bit more spaced out so they can cover they can cover a broader range of sound as opposed to just playing within like two or three ranges they can cover all four now in jazz you will see them in pretty much again the same thing as the brass musicians so you'll see them in like a combo meaning it's a group of three or more people usually it's four if, it's, if it has a horn player and the horns you usually see in jazz music are saxophone and clarinet saxophone clarinet and flute clarinet's not as common but as saxophone and flute but primarily you'll see saxophone and flute and sometimes you'll see clarinet now as a soloist again and ensembles you solo so sometimes a jazz a jazz musician might be in a big band for example, and that's one I didn't put on here, but yeah, so you might see saxophones and flutes in big bands because that's saxophones carry the melody primarily in the big band. But you also might see them playing with like a jazz orchestra and it, it just being somebody up just playing a solo for a song. And the same thing like classical soloist, it's it's just somebody playing a solo of this song with a group of people. Now, when you talk about a brass band, brass bands are primarily brass, and sometimes they have saxophones. Actually, most of the brass bands now have saxophones, and even back in the day, they had saxophones, but before the saxophone became a super popular instrument, people used clarinets, and that's because with all of the heavy sound of the brass, that bright clarinet sound cuts through all of that. And you can hear it sitting on top, like just doodling all of this nice, like crazy melodic stuff over the melody the trumpet player's playing. So in traditional brass band, you have clarinet. And it really wasn't until Sidney Bechet started playing saxophone in the Dixieland and traditional style New Orleans jazz bands that saxophone started getting popular. Now... In popular music, this is where it kind of gets small because you really only see flute 
and saxophone in popular music. So and you usually only see saxophones and horn sections with, with again, a sax play, saxophone player in the horn section with the trumpet and the trombone player. And usually it's more than one, but then you also might see that sax player might have a flute there because so, they're doubling. So a quieter song or a songwriters feel like playing flute on, they might just play flute. And then as a soloist, again, that's that's given. Like you will see flute soloist and saxophone soloist probably every, you, you actually, you won't see, I'll, let me rephrase that, you won't see the flute soloists as often, but flute solos do happen, but saxophone solo is probably the most common wind instrument solo you will hear. Because saxophone is probably out of all of the all of, all of the the wind instruments or aerophones as they're called, saxophone is probably the most um used with in all of the genres of popular music. You can hear saxophone in hip hop, you can hear it in R and B, you hear it in rock, you hear it in country, you hear it in blues, you'll hear it in pop. It's so many different areas where saxophone is. So saxophone really is important to a lot of the stuff going on with popular music. And then the world music, it goes back to all of those culturally specific and unique instruments that they have. So world music pertains to music from all over the world, different cultures, different continents, different countries, um, and different cultures. I think I already said that. If I did, I'm sorry. But it pertains to that. So when you talk about world music, you'll hear, like, for example... In Asian countries, they have specific flutes and strings they use, so that would be Asian world music. In the Native American tribes that we have here, they have specific instruments, specific um, wind instruments and drums and string instruments that they use, and percussion instruments that they use, that's specific to that culture. So it just is the music for a specific culture. So you hear something, somebody listening to some Asian music that's not like K-pop or like popular music and it's like traditional sound that is probably going to fall into this category and that's where you hear all of those like culturally specific instruments so we look at the different types so you got nine reed instruments like the flute and the piccolo and then all of the other different kinds of flutes that you'll find all over the world there's so many out there it'd be really hard for me to explain all of them um and then the single reed instruments which are the clarinet and saxophone and then dub reed instruments, which are the oboe, the English horn, and the bassoon. Now, we're going to dive right in talking about these flutes. So, typically, the flute is the highest, inst the highest instrument in the woodwind family. And you remember I talked about high and low, right? So, the, <laughs> the flute is the highest pitched instrument. And the flute is typically the highest pitched instrument in, the whole, in a whole like orchestra or band next to the piccolo. Because the piccolo is a whole octave or a whole eight notes higher than the flute. So, just to give you an example of what that sounds like, if the flute is playing here, ah, the piccolo is playing, ah, yeah. And now I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not the best singer. Plus, it's early in the morning, so you guys just bear with me. But that's just to give you an example. Now, flutes are in concert pitch. Um. I think I'll put that later on in a slide. But anyway, if I do, then I'll just come back to when it comes. Flutes are in concert pitch. That's the key of C. So we go to the piano and play a C and play a C on the pick or piccolo or flute. It's it's going to sound the same note. Um, so flutes are originally made out of wood. As you can look, if you see this picture on the bottom right, those are a lot of traditional different kinds of flutes, and those are all made out of wood. Um, but now flutes, like flutes that are made for like Western music, like orchestral music and popular music and even like the flutes that you guys see people playing in our classes and in, our, in any band class are unless they're recorders which don't you know you see those in bands it's the the metal flutes the silver metal flutes now um flutes are used in a wide assortment of musical genres and there are also several variations on the flute so some examples are the alto flute which if you look at this picture in the top left, which shows a, a picture of the flute family, the alto flute is the one with the small triangle at the top. The bass flute is the one with the with the hook at the top. The fife is not on this picture. The fife is like a flute that they play during like Revolutionary War and Civil War times here in America. You usually hear them playing like Yankee Doodle or when Johnny comes marching home with his drummer. And then um, the pan flute, which is if you look to the bottom right on this picture with all of the wooden flutes, it's that one that has all those different tubes on it. So, 
to give you an example of some of that. Now, we talk about some different flute players, some flute players that have made this instrument famous. Now, probably the most famous flute player right now in the world would be Lizzo. That's why I chose to put this picture of her here. Now, she went on SNL, which is Saturday Night Live, for those of y'all who don't know. And there was a scene in the movie Anchorman where Will Ferrell is asked to play some jazz flute and he gets on the stage and he's playing and he's playing to mess out of this flute and he then he starts doing silly stuff so he's all over the club. He's stepping on people's tables. He does like like how she's doing. He blows he he puts some liquor into like his mouth and he spits into the flute and lights it on fire so when the flute blows fire and then he's still blowing it. He goes in the bathroom under the star and looks under the star and he's playing the flute and it's it's really funny. But she did the same thing on SNL and that's why I kinda chose to pick this picture because it was hilarious. Now a lot of these people on this page, you'll see on some of the other pages that I talk about when I talk about saxophone and clarinet players, because a lot of these famous musicians actually double. And there's a whole array of people from different musical genres on here. You have people that are jazz musicians, like Herbie Mann and Hubert Laws and Rashawn Roland Kirk. You have people who do popular music like Lizzo, but Lizzo, who was, Lizzo was also a classically trained flautist. A flautist is somebody who plays the flute. You have people who do free jazz, like Eric Dolphy. You have somebody who actually played in a rock band, like Ian Anderson. So, it's a lot of different musicians on here that take the flute and did so much, you know, with the instrument in their respective genres of music. So, before I go on to play on the flute player, because I actually forgot to play you guys the video so you so that you can hear all of the instruments in the orchestra. So we're gonna listen just to hear all what all of these instruments sound like and so you can kind of see what they sound like. My name is Grant, and I am the conductor of the orchestra. Let's meet the woodwind section, going from the lowest instrument to the highest. The contrabassoon. The bassoons. The clarinets. The flutes. Together, the woodwind section sounds like this. That is the woodwind section. So, 
Now, the orchestral woodwind section, for you guys who kind of might be confused about what that is, so that's, a, that's how an orchestral woodwind section typically looks. So as you notice, there are no saxophones, and that's because in the orchestra, there aren't any saxophones. Um, in bands, there tend to be saxophones, but not in the orchestra. Now, if you go from the bottom up, you saw a contra bassoon, then the bassoons, then there are three clarinets. That one that looks kind of like a saxophone with the carved neck as a bass clarinet. Then you have the oboes and the flute and the piccolo, right? That's pretty much an orchestra woodwind section. And that's just the gist of what they sound like and what they do. And and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and excuse my spelling right here. I... I that's typo, so don't don't laugh at me. <laughs> um, so now we're gonna look at some some flute. I'm gonna play you guys a little bit of the fife and drum, so you can hear what it sounds like. Just a little bit of what the five songs like. I'm not gonna really go into detail with that. I also talked about the pan flute. I want you guys to hear what this sounds like. Actually, this is a guy playing a Native American guy playing Fighting's the pan not flute. That easy, but Grammarly can. This is a Native American guy playing the pan flute. Actually, two Native American guys playing the pan flute. One's playing the guitar, and the other one's... No, not two playing the pan flute. One's playing the guitar, and the other one's playing the pan flute. What he's doing is he's going into the different pipes, and each pipe has a different pitch. That's why they're all different lengths. The longer pipes are lower pitched, the shorter ones are higher pitched. So, I'm not going to really go and let this long four minute video long, uh, this whole four minute long video play, but I just wanted you guys to kind of hear what that sounds like. Now, I know you guys are probably curious about what a, pic what a piccolo actually looks like and what it sounds like. I know you guys got a brief little bit of that when we went over that video where they were kind of demonstrating all the woodwind instruments. But I want you guys to hear actually what it sounds like. And this is the probably best version of something I could use to show you guys what a piccolo sounds like.
So that's probably the best example I can give you of a piccolo solo because in Stars and Stripes Forever, which is one of the marching songs that you tend to hear around 4th of July on Memorial Day and stuff for like military events, um, that Stars and Stripes Forever piccolo solo is like probably one of the most iconic piccolo solos you'll hear, if not the most iconic piccolo solo. And no, he was a little bit ahead of the beat. So, but you do really see how high pitched that is. Like, that's a really high pitched instrument. Sometimes it actually hurts my ears. But onward, I'm going to play you guys some regular pop music flute now. And I want to start with uh, Ian Anderson. And Jethro Tull. Attention. Sorry about the ad, guys. You know, YouTube has all these goofy ads. I'm just going to skip to you guys so you guys can hear him just play. I don't want to play the whole song. Extremely difficult to do to talk and play through at the same time. And actually, I got a special treat for you after I play this other song. So I can show you something else that people do in the suite. took his talents and put it with a rock band and he was like that was like one of the biggest selling points of the band of his band just for a tour. He's actually singing into his suit while he's playing. So, that's Ian Anderson. Now, he's a little eccentric, but he can play the mess off that flute. Now, um, 
two more things I want to show you guys about the flute. Um, this song in particular, because you guys know the song. Somebody sampled, actually, this song. An artist that you guys probably love to listen to. Liberty, 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 Liberty. So, an uh, artist that you guys know. You want me to talk about when I come home at night and my son's asking me what I did today? This song. And I actually say, well, I had a meeting to talk about. You know, what are the... Okay. Artists that you guys know actually sampled this song. And I'll play the song for you guys after the part, after this. Like, I'm not going to play the whole song. Because he's kind of giving you a little bit of jazz to the beginning. I don't have to go until you hear him so long. So, I don't know if you guys heard the part. I'm going to go back a little bit to see if you caught it. Right here. Just that little bit. Now, I'm going to type this in. I'm gonna type this in and I want you guys to hear the flute cycle. The flute cycle is right here. Same song, right? Then that's the beginning of the song. So I'm not going to play the whole thing. I just want you guys to hear that sample. Now the last thing I want to show you guys. Is this. Because this guy, as you can see what it says, it says beatbox and flute, right? This Look, guy Cleveland. here. Someone needs help customizing and saving with Liberty Mutual. Actually beatboxes and plays the flute at the same time. And it sounds really good. This is a really old video of him. Just another video of him over to the right. His name is Greg Patillo. You guys should look him up. Really, you should look up everybody who I showed you guys in this video. And all their names are in the, in the video. So if you, if you find something or you're curious about somebody, just go through the video and look him up. So, we don't have to keep going with Greg. We're actually going to go back over to the PowerPoint. And um, move on to the clarinet. So, clarinets. So, the clarinet, 
as a single reed woodwind instrument. Um, cut outs are made of metal or wood. Wooden is the standard. It's actually like this African black wood they make them out of. Um, although we do have some metal ones that you can see in the picture, and then some of them also have metal like bells at the end and metal like mouthpieces and necks. And actually, I have a fully metal clarinet, a fully metal regular uh, clarinet at the at the school. That you really really only seen those a long time ago, and that's it. But it sounds the same like the regular standard clarinet does. Now, clarinets are usually pitched in B flat, so same as the B flat trumpet, but they may also be pitched in A, and that's because, like I know in some orchestras, some music actually calls for two different clarinets, so you would have a clarinet that has a B flat, clar a, clar a clarinetist that has a B flat clarinet and an A clarinet, and they have them both there because sometimes the music will call for them to switch. Now, um... They are primarily used, like I just said, in orchestral music or jazz. You hear them. That's the main place you'll hear a clarinet. And in jazz, you usually hear them. Sometimes you hear them as a soloist, but you'll also hear them as a double for a saxophone or a double for a flute player. So it just to give you a little insight there. Now, some examples of the clarinet are the bass clarinet, the contrabass clarinet, piccolo clarinet. Now, when we talk about clarinet players, these clarinet players pretty much represent more jazz and more classical music and some actually Latin music. Like Paquito de Rivera is a famous clarinet player who does Latin jazz, but it's still a subset of jazz. Um, I think the coolest thing on here is you see they got Marcus Miller and I put bass clarinet by him and Marcus Miller actually is a he plays electric bass and the fact that he plays bass clarinet also I thought it was a really cool thing and you actually hear I'm gonna actually play him playing bass clarinet on a song so you guys can see it and he actually played bass with Miles Davis and some other people he's a phenomenal he's a phenomenal musician all around but that's just a little tidbit about him playing bass clarinet. So let's go over and jump to clarinet. And I'm going to show you guys some traditional clarinet first. Then we'll talk about some modern jazz clarinet. And then I'll play you guys some bass clarinet. So let's do that. So let's do Dixieland clarinet first. So this video is kind of long. But it, it should be some of them playing this so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Hi, my name's Eli Yaman. I'm the head of instruction for the Middle School Jazz Academy here at Jazz at Lincoln Center. So happy you've joined us today, and we're excited to be joined by New Orleans bass clarinetist Evan Christopher. He's going to be showing us how to play on a great New Orleans standard called Careless Love. And uh, let's play a little first. Sure. Talk about it. I just want you guys to hear what it sounds like. No. A long time ago, they, they used to put that heavy vibrato on songs. I'm not going to go any more into it than that. That just gives you a little bit of what it sounds like. Um, now, what I do want you guys to hear. I want you guys to hear this. So you guys can hear I'm not calling play her version of this Armstrong song, La Vie and Roll, or song which Armstrong made popular, La Vie and Roll. Now, 
now, the thing that makes this song kind of special is we pick if you listen, the clarinet is technically a higher, it's just a higher pitched instrument than the trombone, but the trombone's carrying the melody in the upper range, and the clarinet is actually playing the harmony in the bottom, so it gives it a different kind of sound. Jazz clarinet, and this is more like this is the bass clarinet I wanted to show you guys. Actually, let's do a better one. So, this actually wasn't what I wanted to show you guys. I really wanted to show you guys Butterfly, but I couldn't take, take up the chance to see, to you guys to hear 
could play, but I actually want to want you guys to hear the bottom, the more bottom end of the bass clarinet. So this is actually one of my favorite songs, a jazz folk song called Butterfly. I'm sorry about my screen being so dark. I just brightened it up so my hope. Hopefully, it wasn't bothering you all. And I apologize for the volume. If at any point it's too low, just put some headphones in. So, so everybody, you see how low that sounds, though. So I don't have to really go into any more detail on the clear national. That's that's pretty much the gist of what you get out of the clear that players for doing popular music. Um but I get to move on to the saxophone. And saxophone's gonna be hard to pick from because there's a lot of different music that saxophones are in and that they cover. So I'm not gonna try to bore you guys with a bunch of saxophone videos, but I feel like it's important that I cover the basics. Um at least play you guys one from each of the main four saxophones that you'll hear in popular music. Um, so, saxophone is a single member of the woodwind family. It was invented by Adolf Sax in the 1840s. Um, it's the only woodwind of the, member of the woodwind family to be made out of brass. Um, and there are four main, used, four main saxophones used in popular music and jazz. So that's the, that's the soprano, the alto, the tenor, and the berry or short for baritone. Um, saxophones are either pitched, usually either pitched in E flat, that would be the alto and the baritone saxophones, and B flat, that's the soprano and the tenor saxophones. And there are other saxophones pitched in different keys. So, and there are, there are more than just these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight saxophones that are in this picture. There are more than just those six. There are some other ones that are in between, but I didn't feel like giving you guys a, a picture or a visual with all of the different ones because there's way too many. Um, you know, saxophone can be used as an orchestral instrument, usually as a soloist, but it's rare. And some orchestral pieces do call for saxophone, so you may or may not see it in an orchestra, but it's not common. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the picture, but this saxophone in between the alto and the tenor, the C melody saxophone, was a saxophone that was actually made more so for classical music. And like I just said, classical saxophones are usually pitched in C. Now, famous saxophone players. There are so many of these guys that I'm not going to be able to go through all of them. Most of these guys on this list are people who I'm a very big fan of. Um, and again, some of these people are keep popping up from the same list, like Eric Dolphy. Um, what's another one? Sidney Bechet. So, there are a lot of saxophone players, and most of these guys have one specific saxophone they play, but most of them play a mix. So, we're going to dive right in and hear some saxophone. Um, I think I'm going to play you guys just some regular jazz saxophone first. So, 
actually, let's do. I just want to solo. solo on his song work song um to give you guys an example of some soprano saxophone let me see if I can find a good example I'm trying to find something that's not a uh, Jazzy, but let me see. Let's just listen to this just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Liberty Mutual, take 96. Liberty Mutual. Cut. A liberty butchimal. Cut. It
soprano saxophone. You can see it's a little higher pitched than the alto. I actually want to play you uh, something a little bit more, more popular for the alto sax. I'm actually let me for the tenor saxophone. This is actually a remake of Shadow. Yeah. Only, yeah. yeah. Only, 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 Only pay for what you need with Liberty Mutual. Only pay for what you need with Liberty Mutual. Saxophone player Casey Bedburn plays this ridiculous solo at the end of the song. <laughs> saxophone and let's do some some bass saxophone I actually know probably this is my favorite bass saxophone so I'll see you guys can hear what it sounds like one two three four liberty 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 liberty, liberty. Yeah. Yeah, okay <laughs> Saxophone, it'd be the last one we're here in the big band or in the regular hand section, too. So, just to give you guys that perspective, he's the last one. And that's where the bass comes on, or TV. It's also 
Sometimes it's common, but usually not. Usually it's the baritone saxophone. That's the lowest pitch instrument you want to use. Next to the upright bass with the electric bass. That's that, and I do want to play you guys some horn section stuff. So you can hear how everybody sounds kind of together. Actually, I'd rather play this. You guys can hear how all of the horns kind of work together and how the saxophones actually fit into the horn section with the trumpet and bone. another one in the same horn section so you guys can hear what they sound like on a different song on a slower oh, song man. See how they all kind of fit together there? So, just a little bit of that. Now, going on to the last slide here, we talk about dub reed instruments. That's the oboe, the bassoon, and the English horn. Now, they are the main members of the dub reed family. There's also something called a contrabassoon, which is way back earlier in the slide when I played you guys the video of the orchestral woodwind section. The first instrument they showed you was a contrabassoon, it looks kind of like the regular bassoon but it's a little bit more curvy and a little bigger it's pretty much the same it's just a, just lower it's a lower bassoon that's all it is um so oboe and the bassoon are pitched in concert pitch which is C the English horn is pitched in F kind of like the French horn um so they are primarily used in classical music although they have been used in jazz and popular music now the thing I want to show you guys about these instruments is there are two iconic uh, musical selections that feature one features the oboe, the other features the bassoon. I'm going to play the one for the oboe first, so you guys can hear that one. And that's what I mentioned to you guys earlier in the video about the Swan Lake oboe solo. So I'm going to play you guys that first, so you can hear what it sounds like.
think so. That's probably the most well known. Oh well, song that you will hear. Now, if we talk about Little Bit Soon, this is actually from a Disney movie called Fantasia. And I want you guys to hear the bassoons. Actually, I'm going to just play you guys the actual thing. seen such a gorgeous lawn. When you see a great lawn, it's all you see. It was going on in a cartoon because what happened was Mickey Mouse was working with, under the sorcerer and he had to just keep bringing his water back and forth. And what he did was he didn't want to be working there, so he made the broom do it. He put the surface hat on and made the broom do it, and that's the sound of the broom walking carrying in the bucket. That melody and all those passed up through different instruments and started with the song, then it went to the song, but now it's in the front row. So, I want to play you guys some other bassoons so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Now, to me, bassoon actually sounds similar to saxophone, but you guys can be the judge of that. Liberty Mutual, take 96. Liberty Lutual. Cut. A Liberty Butchimal. Cut. Be Thank you. 
actually playing a transcription from probably one of my favorite saxophone players and I actually didn't put him on a list so bat me but he's playing a solo by Michael Brecker it's actually probably one of my favorite of my top five saxophone players because Michael Brecker was really really amazing and Michael Brecker also didn't just play jazz, Michael Brecker also played in popular music. I'm not going to go back and play you guys any saxophone because I'm actually towards the end of this video. But just to give you um, a look into Michael Brecker's sound, if you guys have ever heard the song, Just Like Candy, yeah, the saxophone solo that's played in that song is actually him. So just to give you guys a glimpse of with his playing, and you can actually hear his saxophone playing over the bassoon because the bassoon's a slightly lower instrument. You can hear just the ridiculous amount of stuff that this guy was playing. So, I urge you guys to check him out. Um, then, one last fact about these double reeds before I conclude this video is that the oboe and the English horn and the bassoon are actually made out of the same type of wood the clarinets are made out of. So, just to give you a little bit of Insight into how they're made. I mean, really, if you look at the way the keys are constructed and everything, it looks really similar to a clarinet. Only difference is they don't have a mouthpiece. That little metal tube thing is like the socket that comes out of the instrument to stick the reeds into. So, and that actually concludes this video here. If you guys like anything that you saw or heard, if you guys want to check out any of those people on the list of different musicians I'll put for especially for the flute and saxophone because those are the instruments you'll be hearing more so in popular stuff I urge you guys to do that and um, I'll see you next time